Uh, welcome to today's presentation. And uh, my title for the thesis is the rotor joint recovery by multimodal MPC in the VQL system. And uh, today, the leading aerospace Today, leading aerospace companies such as Joby has actively developing the hybrid VTOL system that integrates a fixed wings. And uh, however, maintaining a precise trajectory during such port is critical for safety. And uh, especially when transporting the passengers or valuable, uh, valuable cargoes. The innovations are necessary uh, kind of uh, for to ensure this aircraft, uh, aircraft can stay airborne even if one rotor failure. And uh, as you can see in the video, the rotor malfunctions can completely affect the uh, flight stability of the VTOL, potentially leading to a severe control challenges. Despite this, the inherent over actuation uh, uh, design of this VTOL systems provide a building capacity to withstand force. So, uh, depending on the deployment of the robust control strategies, we are hopefully to uh, maintain the stable under the severe rotor force. So in, in response, our research has developed a port tolerance control system using the nonlinear model predict predictive control. And uh, this method is not only developed to ensure the VTOL maintains the stability during the rotor force, but also improve their ability to follow the predetermined trajectory. And uh, firstly, um, after the introduction of this project, I want to talk about the methodology with the following five aspects. The first one is a dynamic model. The second one is a control strategy. The third one is a system tra trajectory. And the third one is an MPC trajectory, the uh, structure. And the final one is a and PC design. Let's move on to the dynamic model part. First, uh, the, the dynamic model of a VTOL aircraft is mainly influenced by three factors, the gravity dynamics, thrust dynamics, and aerodynamics. This element collectively, uh, collectively determine the aircraft behavior and performance. And uh, therefore, both the total force and moments applied to the VTOL can be interpreted as the sum of these three uh, dynamic factors. The first one is the gravity. And the cost acting on the center of the mass, we, uh, it doesn't generate torque on the VTOL. The second one is the thrust, and uh, derived from the inch rotor. It produces two types of the torque. One is generated by the rotor acting at a distance from the center of the mass, and uh, another is comes from the reaction force caused by the rotation of the rotor and rotor arms. And uh, the third one is from the aerodynamics. And uh, these are uh, there are three primary forces to consider when developing the aerodynamic model. And uh, there are drag force, lateral force, and lift force. And uh, also, uh, the torque we consider is the road torque, pitch torque, and the yaw torque. And uh, then. After talking about the dynamic of the VTOL, let's further move into the control part. Like compared to the uh, traditional offline trajectory planning method, the MPC is predictive, which makes it have the adaptability to the dynamic environment and model changes. Thus, in the event of the rotor failure, the MPC can re-optimize the trajectory input to compensate. And also, uh, the MPC is based on the optimization and could handle the constraints by designing the objective function and the constraint function, which uh, means that it is capable to managing the overactuated system, especially the MPC can optimally allocate the rotor efforts uh, across the virus actuators, taking advantage of the overactuation to improve the very close performance and efficiency. Thus. Uh, it is a good choice for our system. Um, then I would talk about the whole system structure using the NMPC controller. And the, the idea of this multimodal and the multi-controllers is derived from the divide and conquer thoughts. And the different areas are divided according to the different working scope of the system, where each area has its corresponding model or controller. It is uh, reasonable for for tolerance because we have various type of the boards. And uh, more precisely, the multi MPC method is based on the tree structure and uh, which design multiple MPC, uh, we, when designing the multiple MPCs, 
possible failure values are estimated and therefore are modeled advanced. Besides, a model predictive, uh, predictive controller corresponding to the failure are then designed on forehead. And uh, one of this NMPC controller is used as the main NMPC controller, and uh, which operates under the normal conditions. And the other NMPC controllers are utilized as a standby um, control configuration. And uh, when a, uh, road, uh, one of four occurs, the main NMPC controller stops working, and the switcher is used to switch the control configuration to a standby NMPC controller corresponding to its ports. And the, to simplify the whole system, you can see we group the symmetrical rotor ports. Based on the physics of the flight dynamics, uh, when one of the, them fails, what we do is immediate the activation of the rotor diagonally opposite to the faulty one. And uh, it is designed to decrease the impact of an uh, unbalanced moment and stabilizing the VTOL. After all, unbalanced moments caused by a single rotor failure can cause the catastrophe effect on the VTOL. And in summary, first, uh, the multimodal strategy incorporates the different controllers for various types of the rotor ports, where each area of the system is assigned a specific model or controller optimized for its unique challenges, enhancing the fault tolerance control through the MPC. Second, to enhance the simplicity uh, Simplicity and robustness. The system groups the symmetric rotor force and uh, implement a strategy of shutting down the rotor diagonally opposite to the 41. And uh, this approach helps, uh, helps decrease the impact of the balance moments caused by the rotor failures, stabilizing the vertical efficient, efficiently. And then, after talking the whole system structure, let's move on to uh, move, move further into the detailed. An MPC controller structure. To derive the trajectory, we take three factors into the account. The first one is a manip uh, manipulated variables that could drive the vehicle moving forward the uh, de destination. And the second one is measure disturbance. In the conventional planning method, the controller reacts only after the system is affected by a disturbance and deviates from the reference value. But uh, while using the measure disturbance, the NMPC can manage the component as long as the disturbance is detected, which results in the faster reaction than the feedback method. And uh, the third one is on measure disturbance. And uh, it is, uh, if, if there is a steady state gain error between the real and prediction model, uh, on measure disturbance can use to reject it and uh, adjust the system until the planned output uh, returns to its desired trajectory, just like the classical internal feedback control. And uh, finally, uh, we talk about the implementation of the NMPC design, and uh, it's more about the design of uh, the objective function and constraint function. For the objective function one, one part is the state tracking, uh, it is, aims to minimize the deviation of the vehicle's actual, system, uh, actual state from its de desired state, ensuring the precise adherence to the intended trajectory. And another one is a control effort. Uh, it presents a resource expense required to achieve the control goals and focusing on optimizing the system efficiency by minimizing the energy use. For the control, uh, for the constraint parts, we have four constraints to consider. Four kind of constraints to consider. The first one is the actuator constraints. They limit the range and the capacity of the actuator and ensure the reliable operation. The second one is the state constraints. It defines um, the permissible range of, for the vertical states, ensuring it operates within the safe and the functional boundaries. And uh, the third one is about the safe margins. Uh, they establish the buffer zones within the system operations to prevent the critical failure and ensure a safe operational envelope. And uh, the final, final one is uh, for tolerance constraints. They are designed to maintain the system functionality and safety in the event of the component failure or errors. After talking about the methodology I have designed, Let's move on to the evaluation part. For this part, I want to uh, answer four, three questions. The first question is, what is the performance 
of the NMPC controller versus the LQR controller. And the second one is what is the performance of the multimodal NMPC versus a single um, NMPC controllers. The second one is in the different kind of the rotor forms, like the partial rotor for failures or the uh, complete rotor failures, what, uh, what's, what, how this ray kind of the controller reacts. So we do some simulations. And for this simulation, we use the flight gear as an experiment environment. And uh, we do, this, do the flight control on the three, uh, three kind of the controller. They are LQR control, MPC control, and the multimodal uh, MPC control. And uh, firstly, we inject the 75 rotor force. And as you can see, the LQR control lost the control of the flight and the flight crashed. And uh, the sec the, then, we, but the MPC controller and multimodal MPC controller succeed. And then we uh, inject a 100% rotor force. Here, we can see that the MPC controller, controller failed to control the flight on, under this severe rotor force, but the multimodal MPC keeps, keeps the flight following the predetermined trajectory. And uh, then we go, go further into the data part. Here is a comparison uh, experiment between the NMPC and the LQR under the partial rotor fort. And the simulation result shows that while NMPC consistently keeps the vertical on the track and controls the angular deviation effectively, the LQR struggle to maintain the course, leading to unstable and erratic paths. And uh, when we look into the rotor force, which is, is in the right figure, and um, the response difference in the uh, rotor force, NMPC adjusts the rotor inputs effect effectively, uh, compensating for the lost thrust and maintaining the ver vertical orientation. In contrast, under LQR control, rotor force are unstable and the dramatic opposite downs. So our experiment has proven that MPC effectively handled the rotor force up to the 75%, significantly outperforming the LQR under the same situa situation. The MPC not only maintained the trajectory control, but also ensured the stability despite a severe reduction in the rotor effectiveness. In summary, the MPC's great for tolerance capacity are clear and successfully manage the severe rotor force that could cause a VTOL crash, crashing under the LQR control. And then um, to further test our enhanced control strategy, we simulate a complete rotor force on the rotor one and observe how our system would react. And the uh, the result clearly demonstrated the benefit of our strategy in improving the VTOL fault tolerance. When facing a complete rotor fault, the standard MPC struggle with a asymmetric force distribution, leading to a significant deviation from the intended position and attitude, as shown in the red frame. And uh, the control response are reactive, but finally, fell to, uh, to correct the imbalance, revealing its shortcoming in handling the severe rotor force. In contrast, our multimodal MPC strategy, which includes the uh, immediately shutting down of, of the rotor diagonally to the board, proved, proved robust. And uh, it efficiently managed the unbalanced force and maintained the, uh, maintaining the control. And uh, the approach allows the different controller to handle the different types of the force, offering a more dynamic and efficient solution as shown in the right figure. And thus, it survived the VTOL in such a severe rotor force. The proposed, uh, at the conclusion, the proposed multimodal strategy implements a divide and conquer strategy, hence uh, uh, serves as a ro uh, robust fail set enhancing the resilience of the VTOL uh, vehicles to the rotor force beyond the already impressive compatibility of the MPC. And uh, for the conclusion part, firstly, as a methodology, the implementation, uh, the integration of the MPC framework coupled with the strategy rotor deck activation and the use of the multimodal strategies make a significant innovation in the VTL technologies. 
And uh, as a conclusion, our method has shown the great performance compared to the traditional LQR controllers. We have seen significant improvements in managing both the partial and complete rotor failures, proving the robustness of our approach. In terms of the fault management, our uh, system successfully handled the rotor defect with a complete control configuration switching mechanism. This adaptability is a key in the real world, world um, with a uh, in the real world application where uncertainty is only constant. And uh, lastly, the extent operational range of our VTOL under this new system cannot be overstated. And uh, we facilitated the control descent and the safe landing, ensuring the resilience even in face of the severe rotor force. And uh, this capacity is vital for maintaining the safety and operational integrity regardless of the challenge encountered. This innovation not only pushed the boundary of what is possible in the IRA technology, but also significantly incre increased the safety and reliability of the VTOL operations, ensuring they are prepared for the demand of the tomorrow's sky. And uh, that's all, thank you for listening. Question. So when there's a failure, you deactivate the burner on the other side. So yes. See how that that would make um that would stabilize the moment about the Z control axis, but not the other one because it's meant to be symmetrical, right? Yeah. So you would have to actually reduce the overall force in the motors. Actually, uh, as you can see in the rotor force, um, like in this right figures, you can see that, yeah, on the right figures, when we deactivate, well, uh, like we inject a partial rotor force, like into the uh, rotor one, and uh, kind of, kindly, uh, the rotor force is also deactivated to the like same level, and uh, there will be a improve uh, kind of increase of the rotor four of the rotor five and the rotor six. That means that uh, if we deactivate the diagonal rotors, other rotors will serve uh, as the main rotors and it will generate a more uh, increased rotor force to maintain the whole flight. So your other rotors are compensating. Yes. I have another question. So, yeah, you know, not not on your MPC is more expensive to compute. Yeah, right. And so the question is, can you actually compute it fast enough in uh, the presence of fault? Yeah, <laughs> actually, the real time performance is uh, quite a uh, quite a problem. And uh, for this study, we just kind of the uh, pre pre calculate all the trajectory and the uh, uh, with the uh, rotor fault inject, we will pre uh, calculate. How how it would uh, how, how the how the uh, MPC controller would react and uh, how it will fix that problem and uh, I think um, the real time performance would be a part of the future work maybe uh, simplify the some part of the uh, calculation and uh, uh, that uh, and uh, with a more powerful calculation uh, uh, tool that would be helpful yeah. And, and I'm assuming you apply the same state constraints to your LQR as you did to your MPC. To, to your yes, LQR. that is uh, totally same as the conditions for a comparison. <clears throat> did the LQR ever return an invisible solution? Uh, the LQR's visible, uh, uh, it is in this, uh, oh, sorry. I think the color is really, <laughs> Kind of, uh, actually, the LQR is an orange line, and uh, as you can see for the position, uh, as a reference, as a kind of the sine cosine, and uh, it will ups uh, ups and down dramatically, and which just lose the control and crash, and uh, also for the rotor force, 
uh, we set a limit of the rotor force, so it cannot go uh, beyond the 10, but uh, as you can see, it's also upside down dramatically and uh, kind of it just lose the control of it. Yeah. But then, I mean, so, so it, do you know what's causing the, the, the oscillations in the results? Oh, got it. I think uh, that is kind of, um, for the LQR, it doesn't have the predictive uh, uh, kind of uh, functionality. So it's just uh, calculates the, the next step based on the previous step. So when there is a big up and down on the, its movement, there will be uh, ups and downs on the rotor force to kind of try to compensate it, but it fails. Yeah. So, so the LQR is only regulating the vehicle's yeah. state, but it has no notion of trajectory. Right? Yes. Any other question? And then I have one more question. Like how sensitive do you think your actually your your MP your MPC controller is to your plant, right? So in yeah. general, you know, at least for MPC and then and, yeah. and most likely for nonlinear MPC as well, yeah, you kind of have to have a very exact plant model for things yeah. to work well. Yes. Uh actually I think um I think for that's why I do the simulation in the flight gear. It has a very well, uh, well, well formed uh, uh, model, and uh, it has a noise in it. And uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, based on this uh, kind of the real world, world simulation, it still work well. And as you can see in the third, uh, third, third, uh, videos, it survived from not only the 35% of the rotor force, but also survive from the 100 rotor force. So I think it's robust enough to uh, kind of consider the real world or real, uh, some kind of the simulation, yeah. And you're assuming three, so, so this is like a really interesting, so you're assuming three rotors on each wing, is that? Yes, okay. yes. Great, any other questions? Yeah, what could be the downside of uh, maybe downside? Uh, the downside of uh, I think there is not any cost. Yeah, it's called uh, the cap uh, the calculation cost is really large, and uh, cost we need to predict a uh, future like uh twenty steps of the uh control inputs, so it will cost a lot of the calculation uh uh. Use uh, it will use a lot of the calculation, and it, for now it's not the real time one. So there's still kind of uh some improvement area. I think that's is the main downside of the this technology. Yeah. Who else is doing something similar? Uh, yeah. Who is doing something similar? Uh, if it's uh. Uh, you mean that crash on something else? No, I mean similar research, similar. Yeah. Who, uh, where is the global best practice in terms of that? Uh, mental? We also doing similar work. Oh, got it, got it. Actually, uh, there is other so, uh, some other for tolerance work and uh, on the VTOL and uh, kind of I think compare with uh us us uh, I think our pro uh. Uh, uh, some of them use kind of the uh, other kind of technology, like they use some tra traditional control method and uh, also uh, 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 kind of, um, there is also some one use a uh, multimodal, but they not use on the for tolerance one. And uh, I think that would be the first one that combine this body model uh, strategy with the uh, MPC also used on the VTOL. If we talk about AI now, is there an opportunity to use AI to? Oh, the AI, uh, you mean the combination with it? Yeah, is, is there a stop to use actual intelligence or machine learning? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, actually, uh, that would be uh, that would be uh, interesting uh, tips, and uh, I think that would be really useful to improve the uh, calculation speed. If we can use a uh, uh, reinforced learning or machine learning in our uh, MPC controller, uh, actually there is another one in our lab doing that, and I think that would uh, uh, kind of there will be a pre-calculate network that help the calculation. So that would improve the speed, also uh, decrease the cost of the calculation.